How did animals with jaws evolve from their jawless ancestors? The 60,000 living species of jawed vertebrates, which include everything from sharks to fish to birds to humans, arose from an assemblage of animals called placoderms over 420 million years ago. But understanding how this monumentally important event happened can be really challenging. I'm Sam Giles, I'm a Royal Society Research Fellow at the University of Birmingham, and my research uses X-ray imaging to peer back in time hundreds of millions of years to get inside the heads of early jawed fishes to understand their evolution. I recently worked with a team of researchers in China, Sweden and Australia to take a look at the brain cavity and inner ear in Brinda Belaspis, a 400 million year old fossil fish from New South Wales in Australia. These fossils are from an ancient reef and they're prepared by dissolving away the rock using acid to leave behind just the fossil. And the fossils we have for this, uh, this animal are particularly important because they preserve the brain case. This is the kind of bony box that sits inside the skull and houses the brain and sensory organs. We can peer through breaks in that brain case to look at the internal cavity, the brain cavity, and get an idea of what the brain would have looked like. This fossil, this fossil was first described in the, the 1980s and was thought to be quite closely related to jawless fishes. We use CT scanning to look inside previously hidden re uh, regions of the fossil. CT scanning is a really cool technique that has completely revolutionised paleontology. It uses exactly the same principle as getting an x-ray or a CT scan at a hospital. So we basically use the x-rays to dissect the fossil. We can, uh, we can dissect away the, the, the rock and just take a look at the underlying bone without needing to cut into it. And what we found inside Brenda Belastus was pretty unexpected. We were able to confirm um, most interpretations of the brain cavity, um, but we found really unexpected and new features of the inner ear and endolymphatic cavity. And the inner ear in animals that live on land, like ourselves, is uh, the primary use of it is for hearing. So it allows sound to be transmitted from outside into our brain. But in animals that live in uh, the water, for example, in placoderms, it's primarily an organ of balance. And the inner ear is really intricate in appearance and is very distinct depending on what group you belong to. The inner ear and endolymphatic system in Brenda Belaspis didn't really look like that of a jawless fish or a placoderm. It looks very similar to what we see in fossil sharks and uh, early fossil bony fishes. And because of this unusual mishmash of features, the anatomy of Brenda Belaspis has an impact on our understanding of how different placoderms and jawed vertebrates are related to each other. Our work actually found two conflicting hypotheses of relationships. So in one analysis called a parsimony analysis, we found evidence that Brinda Belaspis is really closely related to jawed vertebrates. In another analysis called a Bayesian analysis, we found evidence that it's not quite as closely related. And um, which of these is more correct? Well, we currently can't tell for sure, but we need to figure it out because that's the only way we can tell how different groups of early jawed and early jawless fishes are related and how many times and when key jawed features evolved. It's impossible to solve this riddle, including the riddle of how jaws evolved, without using uh, cool techniques like CT scanning to take a fresh look at both well-known and newly discovered fossils. And hopefully in the future, we can uh, tie all of these bits of evidence together and get a really clear understanding of both the relationships and the evolution of really important uh, jawed vertebrate features. Thanks very much for listening.